Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning at Salem Evangelical Lutheran Church of Kissel Hill. It is a great joy to be worshiping with you this morning, whether here in our fellowship hall or on the World Wide Web. A few announcements before we begin our worship. First, I am very pleased to continue to announce that on October 4th, we will have our grand return to the sanctuary. All members of the congregation, as well as any visitor whose email address we have, should have received a letter from me last week that was sent out on Wednesday. Um, that letter details the reasons why we're returning to the sanctuary, not just because it's getting colder outside and our system that has served so well over the summer here in the fellowship hall of having more ventilation is no longer going to be feasible, but also because we are installing this week a new air filtration system throughout the church building that's going to allow us to worship even more safely than we have been now, allowing for us to return to the sanctuary and have our normal service continuing to maintain social distance, mask wearing, and all of the other good things that we have perfected during the, I don't know, three months that we've been worshiping here in our fellowship hall. So I want each and every one of you to feel very invited and to be assured of your safety when we gather together on the 4th. I know that for myself and for so many of us, this is a real milestone and something all of us have been looking forward to. That's not to say that life is 100% normal once we go back to worshiping in the sanctuary. It won't be for quite some time. But it is a step in the right direction and one that we are making uh, both cautiously but also with faith that Christ will continue to be with us as we uh, navigate this very difficult pandemic. So put October 4th on your calendar. It's going to be a wonderful festival Sunday. And between the two services, we're going to have a program and some fellowship time uh, that's going to be uh, Sunday school focused. We're going to install our Sunday school teachers. We're going to give our children some prizes from the summer Sunday school program that we did. Uh, but that any member of the congregation and any guest is absolutely welcome to stay for. So that'll be here in the hall with social distancing as well between the services at 9.15 on October 4th. Uh, my next announcement is one that many of you have heard many times before. It's about the nature of this service, how we're going to uh, come forward for Holy Communion as well as depart from the hall. The most important thing to know is that the ushers are the ones who are going to put you in position. They're going to dismiss you for communion by giving you some hand sanitizer. At that time, you can step forward and you can come to this first blue line. This is our on deck area. So you come to that line and you'll wait. There you can take off your mask and you're gonna wait until this spot in front of the altar is available. Then you and any other members of your household can come up to this line, uh, extend your hands, preferably like this, so there's not any chance of contact between the tongs and your hand. I'll put the host into your hand using those tongs, and then you'll wait until the second station is available. You'll go to the second station when it is available, and you'll take your preferred element. The grape juice is white, and the wine is red. So you'll take your preferred element. Our communion assistant will say, the blood of Christ shed for you. You'll consume that. You'll put your cup in the basket to the right of the credence table, and you'll return back to your seat. And before you sit down, our second usher will give you hand sanitizer. You can sanitize your hands, put your mask back on, and be seated. That's the most complicated part. The only other changes are that we're not passing the plate for an offering. The plates are, we have one in the center of the hall, one at the exit door, 
Uh, those are available for you to put your tithes and offerings in, uh, either as you come up for communion or as you exit the hall on your way to your car. So those are all the announcements that I have this morning. I'm looking around. I don't see anyone with an urgent announcement. So let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship by listening to the praise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, 
so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whom God set us free to be the Lord of God. Our privilege is to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us, and guide us in the way of salvation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel. Better this way, I think. A reading from Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent, as well as the life of the child, is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, 
they shall surely live. They shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from your transgressions, otherwise iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn, then, and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read responsively portions of Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies cry in me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your steadfast and love, for they are my life. Remember not the sins of my mouth, of my youth, and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love, and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord. Therefore, you lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. A reading from Philippians. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. 
Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, if we say, from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say, of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you, brothers and sisters in Christ, in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. What is the greatest miracle that God has ever wrought? It's difficult to be certain, since there is so much that God has done. Just look to Holy Scripture. He created the world. He spoke to Moses in a burning bush. He brought the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt to freedom in the Promised Land. He turned water into wine at Cana. He healed those that sought his mercy by extending his hand. He was raised from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He sent a great wind and tongues of fire onto the holy apostles through the working of the Spirit. Well, all of these miracles are iridescent, incomparable milestones in the history of our faith. Ones that we recall week after week and year after year, with pomp, with stories, and with festivals. Most of them are one-time events. One moment where God's grace and mercy was concentrated so intensely that a miracle resulted. And not just an ordinary, run-of-the-mill miracle, but one that billions of people today look to and ponder, seeking to know God's goodness, mercy, and truth through them. Yet despite all these ways that God has worked in history, many of us today look around and ask, where are our modern miracles? Where is God's hand in our own day? Sometimes we look to healings unexplained by science, or to the beautiful, always miraculous nature of each human life, or to the ever clearer realization of the scripture's promise that every people and nation will da bow down before Christ. Yet I believe there is an even greater miracle that we can easily see. One that Jesus talks about in our Gospel lesson today. We'll get to that in a moment, but first, 
we need to talk about Jesus and his conflict with the chief priests and the elders. As soon as Jesus enters the temple in Jerusalem, he begins to be confronted by these religious leaders. This is their territory, after all. This is where they preach, teach, and lead worship. Jesus is a threat to them, as was John the Baptist before him. So, since he is on their turf, they want to know what Jesus thinks gives him the right to teach and heal and have disciples. Since, strictly speaking, only they, the ones who were a part of the hereditary priesthood and religious authority in Israel, have that right. They are the high priests and elders of the people. And Jesus, well, he's just some carpenter from Galilee. Jesus responds to their question with a question. He says, what gave John the authority to baptize people? John and Jesus have a lot in common. John was an outsider, too. Yet he was seen by all as a prophet. The leaders don't want to answer this question because they know they will get in hot water with the crowds that have gathered to see this conflict be meted out. So Jesus tells a simple parable. Unlike most of his parables, this is one that has a clear and very pointed meaning. One that anyone can capture, even the chief priests and the elders. Jesus says, a man has two sons. One is asked to go and work in the vineyard. Says he doesn't want to, but later changes his mind and goes anyway. The other is asked, in turn, says he will go, but doesn't go after all. After telling the parable, Jesus asks these religious leaders, which son did the will of the Father? The religious leaders respond with the obvious answer. It was the first one the one who said he wasn't going to go, but then did, who did the Father's will. Well, this answer is obvious. Jesus' conclusion is not. It's this conclusion that leads us down the path of finding this greatest miracle. Jesus explains the parable to the religious leaders, explaining that they are like the one son who said he would be diligent, attending to God's word and to God's will, but who are, in fact, not listening to God at all, not putting God's word into practice. Exhibit A, Jesus says, is that they don't see God at work in John the Baptist or in Jesus. You would think that these men, so well-versed in Israel's scriptures and with so much time to dedicate to their study, would be the first to recognize God's prophets and God's Messiah. Yet this is not the miracle that I want to talk about today. The miraculous thing is what Jesus says at the end of our reading. That the first people to recognize this are the ones we sometimes think, and that the religious leaders certainly thought, to be furthest 
from God. The ones who have seemingly rejected him, either with their lips or with their life, or who are unaware of him entirely. Prostitutes and tax collectors, unwashed fishermen, illiterate peasants. Yet unlike so many biblical miracles, this miracle that it was these unwashed, sinful, and broken people that recognized God's Messiah immediately. Well, this is not a miracle that has ended in our Bible. No, the Holy Spirit still moves in human hearts. God's word is accepted in all the oddest and least normal places. By the person who before could only find solace at the bottom of a bottle or at the tip of a needle. By the one who is always angry at their friends, family, or at God. By the ones who sweat and struggle for the very little they get. By people who know nothing about God other than that they need him. This story of salvation, salvation that comes not through profound study or through high offices or through some secret initiation, but salvation that comes through God's movement in our hearts. That, brothers and sisters, is nothing less than God's greatest miracle. These miracles are living, breathing, active miracles. They stand and sing and pray all around us as we gather today. We are the miraculous ones, brothers and sisters. We are living, breathing miracles of God. Broken sinners who have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Children of God because we have been marked by the cross of Christ forever. Daughters and sons who, through the movement of the Spirit, have been turned away from ourselves, turned away from our sinful world, and turned towards God by God. This, and this alone, is the greatest miracle, because it is something that is not just in one time, or for a lucky few. Rather, it is forever and for all who believe. Thanks be to God. Amen.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. That we may complete the joy of our holy leaders in the church by our unity of mind, doing nothing out of selfishness, and looking out for the interests of one another. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. For the powerful of the world, that they may turn from the practices of a civilization of death to do what is right and just before the God of life. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. that we may be doers of the Father's will, matching our actions with our words when we agree to obey him, or if we have at first refused, changing our minds in the end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the conversion of sinners, that they may turn from wickedness to righteousness in the sight of God, that they may live without shame in his presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who have asked our prayers in a time of distress, that they may know solace in our love, encouragement in Christ, and God's compassion and mercy in their troubles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that they may be among the blessed ones who joyously proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord in the kingdom of his Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift all these prayers before your throne, holy God, trusting that you hear them. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. I'd like to thank all of you for joining me today, uh, whether you're joining us here in the hall or online. As I've said so many times during this pandemic, each and everything that we have done has been due to your faithfulness, our faithfulness, and God's faithfulness. What I mean by that is your faithfulness in giving, even when it's been hard, even when you've had to mail your offering in or bring it into the church office or make up offering for weeks when you haven't been here. Your faithfulness in prayer for our congregation and for our world our faithfulness as a congregation, that we've made it a priority to be out in the community bearing God's word of love and grace in this time when people need it the most. And most of all, God's faithfulness, which has empowered all of this work and given it success. So I want to thank you again uh, as we gather together for the last Wednesday in this fellowship hall. If you can believe it, the last Wednesday here in the Fellowship Hall, it is indeed that faithfulness from each one of us, from our congregation and as a whole, and from God that has borne us through.
us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the ways of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name, and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God, God of paradise, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see 
that the Lord is good. body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ broken for you. body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you. Amen. And now may the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love towards one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.